Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. We've all heard of the daring raid carried out by Rogue One and the heroic rebel stand over Scarif. We've all heard of Luke Skywalker's legendary trench run and the destruction of the Death Star. But for every well-known battle, there were thousands of smaller battles, sieges, and skirmishes occurring all around the galaxy that you might have never heard of. So today we're going to be taking a look at five early battles in the Galactic Civil War which helped the Rebel Alliance to their ultimate victory. It's hard to say when the Galactic Civil War truly ended. Some might say it started the second the Clone Wars ended. Palpatine probably would be counted as one of these people. After all, it would help create support for his militarization program. There was, in fact, still Separatist holdouts all across the galaxy that needed to be taken care of, and worlds like Ryloth or Mimbom that never truly stopped fighting, trading the separate destroyed army for the newly created Galactic Imperial military. The aquatic world of Moncala was one of those unfortunate planets that served as a battleground during both the Clone Wars and the Galactic Civil War. Just a year after the rise of the New Order and the end of Moncala's own civil war between Separatist-backed Korns and Republic-backed Mon Calamari, Imperial envoys began trying to assert their power over the Mon Cala monarch, Lee Char. The Empire feared Mon Cala because it had a massive ship-building enterprise along with a very large mercantile fleet, but so far Lee Char has been resisting any Imperial influence on his planet. Which is why the Empire ends up launching a false flag attack against one of their own diplomats, which they subsequently blame on the Mon Calamarians, giving them all the reason to invade the planet. Darth Vader and his Inquisitors would lead the battle, which started on Dak City, the main surface city of Mon Cala. The fish people were ill-prepared for the Imperial assault, and quickly they were forced to give up the surface of the planet and retreat to their ocean floor cities. Imperial forces are not well equipped for underwater fighting, so the battle has essentially reached a stalemate. Vader decides to start orbital bombardment of the planet's surface. With no way to stop the turbo laser fire raining down on his planet, King Lee Char ends up surrendering to the Empire, and the planet is immediately occupied. But during all of this chaos, Admiral Radis Amon Kala Commander launches his ship from the depths of the ocean and escapes off-world. His ships would form the backbone of the early fleet of the Alliance to restore the Republic. Admiral Radis and his capital ship, the Profundity, would play a crucial part in receiving the Death Star plans during the Battle of Scarif. While individuals like Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia would serve as the face of the Rebellion, no one was more important to the cause than Mon Mothma. A former senator from Trandrilla, Mon Mothma had attempted to reform the Empire from within the Senate, but finally had given up hope. Then in 2BBY on the world of Gorum, the local citizens began protesting against Imperial occupation and taxation. They essentially block all of the Imperial landing pads on the surface of the planet. A young Wilhoff Tarkin decides to teach a crowd a lesson and lands a ship on the protesters, killing hundreds of people instantly. Mon Mothma made a stirring speech condemning the Imperial attack on these innocent civilians. Then she would resign from her post in the Senate and flee from Coruscant, where she was now branded as the Empire's most wanted. Mothma would eventually reach the protection of the rebel unit known as Phoenix Cell, which would escort her to the rebel base on Datooine. Along the way, the rebels are dogged by Imperial forces. And so the rebels attempt to take a shortcut through the very dangerous Archeon Pass, which went right through a nebula. One of the Empire's newest starfighters, the TIE Defender, leads the hunt and was able to destroy most of the rebels' escort fighters and almost managed to kill Mon Mothma. Ultimately, the rebels do manage to survive the encounter and reach Datooine, where Mon Mothma gives her famous speech, declaring the beginning of the Alliance to restore the Republic. Had Mon Mothma not survived her journey from Coruscant, it's very possible that the various rebel factions would have never joined forces and the Empire would have never fallen. By 3 BB1, the rebel cell known as Phoenix had managed to secure a base on the planet of Atalon, located in the Lothal sector. The planet of Lothal was under Imperial occupation, and the very talented Grand Admiral Thrawn had been sent by Emperor Palpatine himself to make sure the Imperial operations on the planet were running smoothly. Thrawn personally oversaw the feared TIE Defender program we just mentioned. It was far more capable than anything the Empire or the Rebellion had in their arsenal. Which is why the Rebellion had begun planning an assault on Thrawn's TIE Defender factory. Of course, Lothal was heavily guarded and Phoenix Cell needed backup. The mission was considered such a high priority that General Dodano's Masasi group was sent to reinforce Phoenix. The Masasi group possessed the largest fleet so far in the entire Rebellion. 
It included three Brachatak class gunships, three Nebula and V escort frigates, three CR-90 corvettes, an assortment of support vessels and fighters. Combined with Phoenix Squadron's own four CR-90 corvettes, three Hammerhead corvettes, and Quasar Fire class cruiser, this would be considered the largest rebel fleet ever assembled. Which was exactly what Grand Admiral Thrawn was waiting for. Using his incredibly analytical mind, Thrawn was able to figure out the location of the rebel base, and before the rebels could launch their own attack, Thrawn's seventh fleet appeared over the planet of Atalon in blockade formation. Now, normally this wouldn't be such a large problem because rebel ships are quite small and fast, and they're actually designed to run blockades. But Thrawn had brought along with him two interdictor star destroyers that could project gravity wells and prevent any ships in the area from jumping to hyperspace. The rest of Thrawn's fleet was made up of six Imperial class star destroyers and two Arkadens class command cruisers. They had the rebels trapped in a corner and completely outgunned. Had Thrawn been able to destroy the rebel fleet at Atalon, the entire course of the war could have changed. It took Phoenix Cell and the Masasi group years to collect all those ships and crew members for their fleet. Many of the ships that survived this battle would continue serving the Rebellion and play a huge part in the Battle of Scarif. Luckily for the Rebellion, one Imperial commander, Constantine, was far too eager for glory and moved his Interdictor-class Star Destroyer into an attack position against Thrawn's order. Rebel commander Jun Sato saw an opening and ran the interdictor with his quasar fire cruiser. This created a hole in the Imperial blockade, allowing some rebels to escape and gather reinforcements. Shortly after, these rebels returned with Mandalorians and attacked the Imperial fleet from the rear, destroying the remaining interdictor, allowing the rest of the fleet to escape. The Rebel Alliance suffered heavy losses during this battle, and they failed to destroy the TIE Defender program, but most importantly, the majority of their fleet survived. And perhaps even more importantly, Thrawn didn't understand the true size of the Rebellion because Mon Mothma had decided against sending reinforcements to the Rebels on Atalon. This is why the Mandalorians had to step in instead. They owed some members of Phoenix Cell some personal favors. Lothal was one of the many important resource-rich Imperial worlds in the Outer Rim. There was a large garrison on the world, including an Imperial Academy, and the world had several weapons and vehicle manufacturing operations and also mining sites. This industrial world basically fed the Imperial fleet. But perhaps equally as important, Lothal was where Admiral Thrawn and that TIE Defender program we were talking about was based. During the battle to liberate Lothal, Phoenix Cell led a highly unorthodox attack on the local Imperial garrison using time-traveling wolves and giant space whales. Their combined forces managed to wipe out almost every Imperial on the planet in some pretty gruesome ways. The TIE Defender at the time had been fighting against the Death Star for funding, but the Battle of Lothal ended any future TIE Defender production. The TIE Defender was far superior to any Rebel Alliance ship and had posed a far greater threat to the Rebel fleet than a giant superweapon ever would. For the rest of the war, the Empire would actually struggle to find a replacement for the basic TIE Interceptor. The TIE Defender would never really make the impact it could have. Grand Admiral Thrawn's disappearance during the battle was equally as devastating for the Empire. The true war for the galaxy didn't really start until after the Battle of Yavin, and the Empire would be missing its best commander. Had Thrawn been in charge of the Death Star during the Battle of Yavin instead of Tarkin, perhaps the Rebels would have been stopped. Either way, the loss of Thrawn and his TIE Defenders were devastating for the Empire and most likely changed the outcome of the war. After the Battle of Yavin, the Rebellion realized that they needed their own capital ships that could go up against Imperial-class Star Destroyers. Mon Cala had always been the obvious source for ships, but ever since the Empire had occupied the planet in 18 BBY, only Admiral Radis and a handful of Mon Cala ships had made it off-world. King Lee Char had been captured by the Empire, and the Imperial-appointed regent on the planet was making sure to maintain the peace and stability on the planet. The Mon Cala Mercantile Fleet was perhaps the largest non-Imperial fleet left in the galaxy, but stationed aboard every one of their ships were Imperial observers. Although most Mon Calamari citizens did not like the Empire, they were hesitant to do anything rash because they feared for their king's life. The Rebel Alliance knew that the only way they could get the Mon Calamari Navy support was by breaking their king out of prison from the world of Strokill Prime. But when the Rebels find Lee Char, he's barely alive and on life support. But his message to his people is clear, oppose the Empire in any way possible. 
Shortly after he gives his message to his people, Lee charges gunned down by stormtroopers attempting to recapture him. This scene is broadcast all across Mon Cala and leads to widespread rebellion. The Mon Cala mercantile fleet immediately mutinies against the Imperial observers on board, and more than a dozen capital ships end up joining the rebellion. The Rebel Alliance fleet now finally has ships that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Empire. So there you have it guys, those are five battles that aren't really covered in any of the Star Wars movies that are quite critical to the Rebel victory, which happens much later on. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.